your advisor of digital on the Kamala Harris campaign in 2020 and joins us now. Sir, we appreciate it. All right, is this the time for the vice president to come back out on the trail? Yes, absolutely. And I think that not only is she doing this so that Newsom's already good chances improve, but people are angry right now and, and she would face her own political consequences if she didn't show up. I mean, let's think about what Americans saw this week in Texas. I mean, abortion is widely supported by Americans and Texas Republicans know that. And that's why right alongside their attack on women's rights, they passed one of the most blatant voter suppression laws but in this country. They decided I, that they yeah, don't need to. I'm glad you brought both of those up because those are exactly yeah. the things that, that your old boss talked about uh, on the stump. Take a listen, then we're going to get your thoughts. You've got to understand what's happening right now. What's happening in Texas? What's happening in Georgia? What's happening around our country with these policies that are about attacking women's rights? reproductive rights, the voting rights, workers' rights. They think if they can win in California, they can do this anywhere. Well, we will show them you're not going to get this done. Not here, never. Does the Texas abortion law that only applies to Texas really bring people to the polls in California? Absolutely. I mean, let's think about what Californians and the rest of the country are watching right now. We know that abortion is widely popular and supported by Americans. And Texas Republicans know that. And so at the same time that they're attacking women's rights, they passed one of the most blatant voter suppression laws in the country. They decided we don't need to do what voters want if they don't if they, they're not able to vote. And this is going to fire people up to the polls. They are tired of minority rule. They are tired of their rights being attacked and their votes being attacked. And I, I have to believe that this is going to have a huge Democratic vote turnout, not just next week in California, but also okay. in midterms 2022. I, 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 got, I got the idea there, and clearly that's what she's counting on. If women's rights and abortion rights are so important, which, as you point out to voters, especially in California, they are, why don't you think she talked about women's rights and abortion rights in Afghanistan? You know, I, I believe that everyone, not just Democrats, but everyone is sad about you know, the change in conditions for women in Afghanistan. What she did focus on is, look, this was a war that we've been in for 20 years and we weren't winning. We don't even have a definition of winning. How many more American lives and, and dollars are we going to put to it? And we couldn't do anything we've, for these women. Yeah, we, we've, we've heard that before. Uh, now we've heard the White House talk about how they're treating women and Clearly, the Taliban isn't listening. It's interesting, though, in terms of what events Kamala Harris has chosen to do, because it, before, and by that I mean the first couple of months of uh, her time in office, she was out all the time, now much less so. Take a listen to a Princeton PhD explain why. Her popularity ratings are lower. And the reason that's so different than past vice presidents is we usually see their favorability track so closely with presidential popularity that it's different. It's difficult to distinguish. But uh, Vice President Harris has been, as you noted recently, five to 10 solid points below Joe Biden. And that's very different than what we've seen in the past. When you were on her campaign, did you guys have any polling that would inform us of why that's the case now? Uh, uh, no, I mean, uh, we've seen the vice president's ratings go up and down. And of course, anytime something like Afghanistan happens, um, she's associated with, with Biden, who, who frankly, I believe deserves credit for getting us out of Afghanistan, a, a war that we've seen. Yeah, I, I think that he fixed no, problems a, that other presidents have created. Um, but a lot of Americans don't see it that way. They don't like the way that we exited. Um, they, they, yeah, and, and, and you, you, make a, you make a great point, though, in terms of separating the policy from how it was done. There's a chance in six or eight months, if there's no terrorist attack, everybody moves on. He gets a lot of credit for it. Uh, Sarah, thank you. Great insights. And we'll have you back. Thank you so much. Good to see you. Now, get this. Fewer men are going to college. But are they doomed without a degree? We're going to discuss what the plunging numbers of college males means 
with a former Department of Education official. And the statue of Confederate General Robert E. Lee is gone from Richmond, Virginia. 